なお前はそこで何してんだよ Hello and everyone, so welcome back to my channel. This is the Metatron speaking and a few of you have asked me to review and talk about this video from the channel Beyond Science talking about the uh, Kunoichi, the supposed female ninja. Now, um, I'd like to first, before actually starting my <laughs> usual debunking, I'd like to first say that I'd like to extend a salutation to the uh, Beyond Science channel. I think it's a very good channel and I also really like the presenter. So this is not in a way, in any way, an attack towards either the presenter or the channel itself, but uh, the video did qualify for a debunking video because of, there is a lot of information that is incorrect. It's historically incorrect, it's historically accurate, uh, inaccurate. Hence, we have now a video response on the Metatons channel. Now you see, when we talk about uh, feudal Japan, and particularly when talking about either the shinobi or the samurai, we have to be careful. Unfortunately, these are not simple topics. These are topics that need to be researched academically, because otherwise, if we just do a Google research, I'm not saying that this is what they did, but it certainly does look so. Uh, it, they do mention the Bansin Shukai, so that means that it was that was some good research at least and today I will explain a little bit about this Bansen Shuka we will talk about it a little bit but um, apart from that loads of the things that they say it's just the sort of things that are spread in forums that you find when you google and and the, the people who talk on these forums about the Kunoichi, the ninja and all their secret arts and martial arts and everything uh, then unfortunately these are people that take most of their information from either uh, modern media media or from uh, video games you know, when we hear the word ninja, most of us probably picture these sword-wielding assassins wearing an all-black garb who are masters at martial arts and the art of stealth. Or maybe this guy. We've read about these black masked warriors in novels and comic books, and we've seen some fictionalized versions of them in a lot of movies for the past few decades. No, actually, that's exactly the fictional ninja. The black masked assassin who is also an expert and master in martial arts, that's as fictional as Naruto. And the way of the ninja is not alive solely intended for, well, men. These female ninjas are referred to as the kunoichi. So just to begin with the most important thing here, and let's get this straight immediately, kunoichi does not mean female ninja. There is only one, okay, only one, as far as I'm aware of, a mentioning of the Kunoichi in the Bansen Shukai. Um, and of course we know it's a female, it's talking about a female and, and we've got the whole situation with the kanji, right? So they write it with the kanji of Onna and then if you just split the kanji in three parts you will read it Kunoichi, okay? But unfortunately that became so popular that now everyone, whenever you say Kunoichi, imagines that all female ninja or all female shinobi no mono wear kunoichi but there is no historical proof for that absolutely we only have one mention of this person called kunoichi which we know was a female who basically was an agent okay well was someone who was sent into uh, into a specific mission it she didn't even have to to kill basically a lot of these female agents used by the shinobi okay um were used so that they could open the doors for example exchange secret passwords or basically prepare the way for the male counterpart the shinobi no mono we just know that once one person was referred to as with the term kunoichi full stop the kunoichi and while they equal their male counterparts in terms of combat and stealth skills problem number two they equal their male counterparts in martial arts well you see here is the thing there is no martial arts in ninjutsu so this is again a very it's a it's a basic problem that it's a basic misunderstanding that a lot of people have ninjutsu is the art of espionage so shinobi no mono, yes, some shinobi no mono were also trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat and who knows, probably, I would say most likely, there were some shinobi no mono, some ninja who were ex exceedingly good at martial arts, meaning uh, punches and kicks and, 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 and all of that. But there were also other shinobi no mono who weren't, okay, completely. Maybe they would have been very good at doing other things, like espionage related things, perhaps there were some who were really good at languages, perhaps there were some who were very good at whatever it could be that they uh, were going to use for their espionage, because let's remember, the, samurai, the shinobi no mono, the ninja, was a spy, full stop. So the fact that we, we shouldn't imagine every ninja was a martial arts champion, every ninja was trained in martial arts, absolutely not. So this concept here, they were equal to their counterpart in martial training, no. They handled their assignments differently from men in several impressive ways. They handled their assignment in a different way from men. 
no mention of any scroll, no scroll mentioning anything like this. So this, it's actually completely made up. The written records in feudal Japan refer to these covert agents and the mercenary assassins as the shinobi. Members of the shinobi clans in Japan were practitioners of ninjutsu, which taught them the strategy and tactics of espionage, infiltration, sabotage, assassination, and even guerrilla warfare. Assassination, here is another big one. Well, first off, female ninja performing assassination, no proof of that whatsoever. Please don't, um, don't assume that a woman doing an assassination makes her into a ninja, okay? So, so the concept of assassination and assassins. Ninja, and he states it all over the place in this video, ninjas were assassins, ninjas were assassins. No, ninjas were not trained assassins. So what does that mean? When I say that ninjas were not trained assassins, does that mean that ninja never uh, performed assassinations? No. Of course, you can have a, a spy, think of James Bond, for example, who in a situation is, is, is asked to actually murder someone. So yes, he will become an assassin, if you will, but that doesn't make him into a trained assassin, which is the most popular concept going out there, which is, I think, the concept that he's is coming up here uh, with here. A trained assassin is someone like Hitman, someone who spent his entire life being trained on how to perform assassinations is a professional that a person they that someone else calls upon to perform assassinations only okay that's the, his speciality ninjas were not this ninjas were spies ninjas were intelligence and commando this is what ninjas were and um, occasionally they would be asked to perform a murder but that does not turn them into trained assassins who spend their entire life learning the art of assassination no ninjas or shinobi no mono spend their entire life learning the art of espionage sometimes also learning martial arts other times they didn't you might have even a fat ninja who is just good at tricking you in gambling for example or a ninja is really good at poetry for example there are loads of situations in which a ninja can use so many different skills to um, be become a spy okay and yes you might have a ninja in history who was also really good at murdering people you know and doing it in a very silent and stealthy way good but that's one it's not the entire um, concept of shinobi domono equals assassin or trained assassin Absolutely not. The existence of female ninja warriors is supported by the Bansen Shukai, a 17th century book containing knowledge and secrets about ninja training. The Bansen Shukai revealed the primary functions of a kunoichi, and that is to infiltrate a target's household by forming intimate relations with members of that clan and gaining their trust. So when he mentions the Bansen Shukai, he's absolutely correct. Yes, these, uh, th this kunoichi singular was used to infiltrate the house and of course so if there were female agents used by the shinobi no mono they would have been used to infiltrate the house and even the idea of some of them becoming a sex partners in order to uh, earn the trust or of a master or whatever yes that is that is absolutely right it's bang on right but again many of these will be there only to prepare the way for the actual shinobi no mono and when the time came to eliminate the target they were monitoring, they did not wait for a male shinobi to finish their job. They did not wait for a male shinobi to finish their work. It's actually what they did. They did wait for a male shinobi no mono to finish their job. The targets of the shinobi were typically powerful and influential members of the samurai class, which meant that they were heavily guarded and were naturally distrustful of men outside of their clan. Here's another interesting thing I'd like to sort of expand on, not really completely, uh, he's not completely wrong on this one, but so yes, um, the targets of uh, the ninja or shinobi no mono were often, I would add, he, he just puts, were higher ranking samurai, they were often, but not all the time. It is important to say that um, many other times the ninjutsu was used for personal revenge or family revenge because their combat skills were just as good and sometimes their method of execution was even more creative and brutal. Their assassination methods were more brutal than that of male counterpart. What? No historical evidence of this, no historical basis of this, and to be honest, I think very, very unlikely but they did also wield actual deadly weapons of their own. Considering that they had to go about their enemy's territory unnoticed, they couldn't just, you know, stuff a long sword in their kimonos. Instead, they carried weapons such as dagger-like hairpins, shurikens, were folding fans with hidden blades and poison, as these items can be inconspicuous while wearing a standard kimono. But perhaps the most iconic weapon of choice used by the Konoichi was the Nikote, which kind of looks like Wolverine's claws. 
special weapons or specialized weapons dedicated only to the kunoichi, the female ninja? Absolutely not. So maybe these agents, that if there were some agents, they might have used, well, hairpins, daggers, which was a very common personal protection weapon anyways, that a lot of people had. Um, the uh, ninja claw with, with the wolverine stuff, absolutely not. So there is not no evidence, nothing of that. It's, there's only one mention of a tiger claw, but nobody's got a picture of it, nobody knows how it looked. So um, yes, absolutely not. That's not historical, it's pop culture. Bansen Shukai is a collection, it's a book which contains the collection of knowledge on ninja skills and it was compiled by uh, Fujibaya, by a man called Fujibayashi who actually went around many different schools collecting all this information to put it all together in one book for the, poop, for the people to, to know about. So yes, it's a very, very important book as far as ninja skills are concerned and it contains the skills of the ninjutsu schools of Iga, Koga and possibly many others as well. It was compiled at the beginning of the Tokugawa period. So to reiterate very quickly on this concept of the ninja being the amazing martial art expert champion warrior, um, I'd like to underline this again. No, they weren't. That does mean that a, a ninja couldn't be a very, very well trained or an, an expert in martial arts. Of course it could, but the, the word ninja doesn't automatically mean that. So um, there can be ninjas who are really good at martial arts and hand-to-hand -hand combat and using weapons, and there can be ninjas who aren't completely. Okay, and that's because it's not part of their training automatically. Uh, and of course, there are some ninja who are samurai. Those ninjas who are samurai, uh, of course, they were trained in martial arts. That's obvious. I don't think I need to mention that. So in those cases, yes, um, but it's not always like this. And it's a very important concept that needs to be underlined. All right, so this is the end of this debunking video. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please remember thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. And hello to uh, Beyond Science. And of course, if they wish to make more videos on the ninja, on the samurai, please contact me and we can talk about it. We can give, a, give you a hand. And when I say we, I mean myself and Anthony Cummings, who has also helped me out with information on this video. Together with the things that I already knew, we could create a good picture of what a uh, ninja would have been. So please contact us. Um, I, I will do it for free, not a problem, considering the huge voice that these guys have on YouTube. I think it's important to get the, the facts straight. Thank you very much for watching, and remember, the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye. Zageruna, ore wa shinobi no mono da!